While Montana's Yak Valley is getting blasted with record snowfall, Tom Orr isn't letting anything slow him down. Ice is getting pretty dangerous here. With Sean McAfee helping to work his most treacherous trap lines, Tom's plowing ahead on winter chores and turning raw pelts into profit. I went on to get the rest of it. A hard-won skill he's also busy handing down to the next generation. All right, go check on Hank's hide. See how that smoke did on that. What's this? A big old skin, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Last week, 10-year-old Hank McAfee got a master class in preserving a hide. You can let him soak in there? Yep. And the ancient technique of brain tanning buckskin. This is what all you gotta do. It looks like it makes it softer. It makes it softer, yeah. Well, this is the skin been airing out here for a couple of days. Once his hides are dried and smoked, Tom typically turns them into garments for sale. Smells good. Smells like a campfire. But this particular buckskin is special. It was real neat working with Hank. After he spent as much time with me working on the skin as they did, I thought, well, we deserve some reward for it. Hi. So Nancy and I started talking about making a vest for Hank. Oh, nice. It's out of the buckskin that we tan together. This would really be plenty good for the front. Well, you should maybe have the buttonholes in the center of the... Yes. But we just got to make sure that the thickness is OK. Skin is different than fabric. Fabric is universally the same thickness. Not so with the buckskin. So when you're making clothing, you have to be careful where you lay your pattern pieces, because you don't want to mess up buckskin. You can't just go down to the fabric store and get more. I could take it right out of here. That'll be good and thick. And then you're going to still have nice big pieces for some other project. Let's get cotton. See how it looks. Here's the back. OK. Yeah, this will work. All right, we need two fringe pieces. To create the fringe, they'll cut an overlapping piece of buckskin and slice it into strips. Then use even finer threads of the skin to sew the patch into place. And I use my fabric glue that will bend and cannot wash out to tack these together so that he can punch the holes. Not a lot of it, a little dab will do you. OK, this goes like that. We're going to punch holes in all the way across here. Then I'm going to use this buckskin to sew it together with. We use what they call a buck stitching. These little strips of buckskin are very strong to sew it together with. And be more traditional, too. It adds a little decorative touch. To yeah, it. and it, it looks good, too, to, to see the buck stitching. It's just above the fringe. This will be fringe. All right, I got this laced up. It's ready for some beadwork, I think. All right. Originally, the Native Americans used porcupine quills that they dyed. And then the white man came along with glass beads that were mostly made in England and Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia, different countries. Africa. Yeah. And so when the glass beads came to the Native Americans, that was a big, big trade item. It's so much easier to put beads onto leather than what it is to do porcupine quills. I mean, you could get beaver skins for a handful of beads, you know. Ready? There you go. You can cut the fringe, and I'll start beading on the next one. 
Okay. We're getting closer anyhow. Yes, we are. Originally, the main thing that they used it for was if you were caught in the rain, the moisture will run down into your fringe and evaporate faster than it will out of a solid piece of leather. With each panel complete, all that remains is to assemble the pieces and add an authentic finishing touch. We need three buttons, right? Yes. One, two, three. Correct. OK, if you want to start buck stitching that, I'll go find an antler and cut some buttons. All righty. I'll be back. Surely a, a buckskin vest got to have buttons on it. And since it came from a buck, we decided we should make buttons out of the buck antlers. Yeah, these are just mostly old shed antlers. <laughs> Most of them had buttons cut off of them. And that's what we're looking for, is more buttons. This one looks just a little big. The big thing is just find the, the size of the button that you need so you don't have to grind it down. I think this one here will work. Yeah, this has got some good brown color in it. And they've, they've got some nice dark lines in them. They look good. Let me maybe cut this one off and see what we got here. Deer antlers are made entirely of bone that thickens throughout the year until they're shed in the spring. All right. If we cut the burr off the end of it, I think we can get three buttons out of here that'll be just right. Turning the sheds into useful items like buttons ensures that nothing nature makes goes to waste. We've made a living off the outdoors for 40 years, so it's dear to me, you know. Not a lot of people know what can be made from just a little more effort. And I'm real interested in passing what I know to a young kid like Hank, and hopefully Hank will end up with some good memories from it, too. Yeah, they still need holes drilled in them. We can do that inside. Days nearly done in the Yak Valley. Hey! And it's time for a young trapper to collect his reward. Hi. Hey, nice. hi, buddy. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You doing good? Yeah, nice to see you. How are we doing? Glad you're going on, Mister. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? you doing okay. All right. You remember the deer skin we were out there scraping and tanning? Yeah. What's this? Something that Nancy and I made up for you. Whoa. Oh, boy. What did old Tom make? Oh, my gosh. That's out of that deer skin. That, that we is had. so cool. The look on his face was amazing when he seen it. It was, it was delightful to see. He seemed really excited about that. You know. That's something that will help him remember all the work it took to do that. Well, wow, look at the beadwork, huh? Yeah, that's a really good job with the beadwork. <laughs> Tom did that. How did you know how big he was, Nance? Yeah, it's all guesswork, but I know he's going to get bigger. That's cool. Yeah. You know, we're at school. Yeah, I love it. You know, if the kid is proud of it, he'll wear it to school so people can see it, you know, and maybe feel good it was worth all the effort. That's something. Look at that. They used to be just an old deer running around in the yeah. woods, didn't it? it? Smells like smoke. Yeah. I love the smell of that. I'll give you a little test here. Why did they smoke their hides? Because so they could go in water, and if they didn't smoke them, it would get hard. And also oh. for the natural body heat to come out so yeah. you could breathe. He's been listening to you. He has. Isn't yeah. that neat? Most kids, you give them a vest, but, uh, you know, they're more interested in their bicycle or something. <laughs> but I retains the stuff that he's learning. It's just a good thing for a kid. I got that skin for you, mister. You want to come grab that skin? Thank you so much. You bet, buddy. I had a good time with you. <laughs> All right, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you kill your buck next year, bring him around, and we'll, we'll... Tan him right up. Yeah, we'll make another vest for your sister. Okay. She can kill her own butt. <laughs>